thank you shrestha thank you i think i did not write the uh, name of the live today trauma so maybe we have to edit it later on I'll just wait for a couple of more minutes and then we shall start. Today's session is going to be a little bit more intense because the topic is trauma and I missed out on writing that in the title. I can edit it right now. Yes, please do that. Please do that and uh, just write the uh, title of the live as trauma. So I'll just uh, wait for a couple of more minutes, maybe six past eight, we shall start and it's going to be a little bit intense. So I just want people to join and then we can start. Thank you. Thank you so much. So maybe uh, five past eight or in a minute's time we will start. So I can see two people are watching me live right now. One is Shreshta, the other one, I am not sure who is that. Uh, Hemant Kumar, okay. Okay. So trauma it is and uh, it's five past eight. A very warm welcome to the people who are watching me live right now. And those who will be watching this episode, uh, the recorded episode. As I said that last month we had the entire month dedicated towards childhood disorder. This entire month is dedicated towards different segments of trauma. Now the reason why I chose this topic is uh, in the last uh, one and a half month, whatever uh, you know cases that came up to me, all were trauma. And I was very surprised that uh, how come suddenly the trauma is all the way on the rise. But then uh, while doing these sessions and everything, I understood that many people who understand depression or who considers depression uh, as one of their disorders is actually suffering from trauma. So that's why this today's episode will be completely on the general idea of what is trauma, what exactly happens in our brain when we go through trauma, any kind of traumatic instances, what happens in our body and how, uh, what are the general techniques with which we can come out. Other two lives that we have in this month will be specific types of trauma. Okay, so uh, we will start today and I will start with the very basic information that trauma comes from the Greek word which means wound. So as you can understand, the, way, the moment I say the word trauma, immediately it has a very a painful negative feeling that goes through your body. The reason is the sound uh, or the syllables that were chosen when this word was uh, created in English matches what uh, is considered as wound in Europe, in the, uh, you know, in Latin word. So it is important to understand that trauma is one such experience where the person becomes absolutely helpless. They don't have any coping skills. They don't know how to handle a traumatic experience. They have probably gone through various situations in their life and that has probably made them uh, you know completely numb and they they just don't know they feel extremely helpless and it's not that the trauma patient will be in a traumatic episode throughout their life or throughout the day it comes in sudden flashbacks and that is one of the major difference between trauma and depression while in depression people do remember things people do remember a lot of memories but in case of trauma, you have severe flashbacks that comes back. So when you have flashbacks that comes, what happens is uh, immediately everything at a, you know, in a flash of a second, everything you remember and you do not only remember, you are actually living that experience again. And you feel the similar kind of pain, similar kind of discomfort in your brain, in your body. And that is what differentiates between a trauma and a depression. So for example, if I'm depressed, whatever is the reason, 
I will feel sad. There is a general feeling of sad and despair. But in case of trauma, I am fine. Like right now I am smiling. And immediately there is a flashback. Some trigger happens. There is a flashback. And I am in that like 5 years back, 15 years back, 20 years back. I am in that spot. I am reliving the experience. And it feels horrible. You know, it feels like you don't know what to do. You don't have any coping skills. You feel extremely distressed. And uh, you just feel that somebody has tied up your hands and legs and have thrown you in the water and you just don't know what to do. And it is very suffocating. The entire experience is extremely suffocating. You are crying. You don't know why you are crying. And it is like horrible. The experience is extremely horrible when it comes to trauma. Now, uh, there is another major difference between trauma and uh, depression. The major, another major difference is in case of trauma, the experience is what we call somatic and psychological. Now, what is somatic? Somatic in usual terms is called physiological experience. So, whatever instances happen, for example, I'll take a very simple experience to start with accident. So, you go through an accident. That memory is there in your brain. But in case of trauma, the memory is actually stored in every cell of your body. So basically, I have said this before in other lives too. So let's say when you go through an accident, there are jerks that happens in your body because the car is bumping against something or the other. But uh, so let's say you have gone through that period, five years, six years have passed and you have not, you think you have recovered from the accident, everything is fine. Now when you sit in the car and suddenly there is this jerk that happens, and if you have not recovered from trauma, immediately the entire memory comes back. Everything comes back in a flash of a second. And you are in that spot five years back, exactly what has happened. Your entire body becomes numb. You cannot move yourself. You go through anxiety. You go through panic attacks, everything at one point of time. That is trauma for you. Okay. So trauma, that's why a lot of, you know, when it comes to treating trauma, it is very different from that of depression. So people think you can do cognitive therapy, you can talk and you can bring people out of trauma. That is, does not happen. Because there are a lot of memory that is there in the body. Uh, that needs to get rid, you need to get rid of those memories too, along with the memories that are imprinted in your brain. Okay. So the body remembers that, not only remembers the traumatic experience, but it also remembers the, you know, the kind of uh, feelings, the kind of emotions you went through. It remembers everything. So even when the memory is over, the body still remembers that experience which was there. So for example, another example I'll give, uh, another traumatic experience is uh, rape victims. So let's say one person goes through the traumatic experience of being raped and this person uh, finally thinks that she, he or she has recovered from that experience. Now, the body has gone through enough amount of torture during that entire instance. So you might have forgotten that instant. So uh, no problem, Chandrani. Thank you for joining. So you might, you might, uh, so Chandrani, you might just share it with one of your friends. I'm just not taking her name because this will actually help her understand her situation. We discussed this last time. So uh, what I was saying is, let's say the rape victim. So this rape victim has gone through certain instances in their life. So few months have passed, few years have passed. The person thinks that, okay, I have forgotten about that instance. I am fine now. But the body remembers the torture. Now what happens is next time there is no rape. But next time what happens, this person tries to get intimate with their partner. Let's say I just want to get intimate with my partner whom I love, you know, very well. And any act of the partner which is similar to anything that happened in the rape instance, immediately you put yourself into the flashback. You're in that flashback scenario. You remember everything that has happened at that point of time. You might just feel extremely suffocated and that impacts your relationship too. So the impact of trauma is not only at that particular point of time. Trauma experience people are experiencing in the cage of trauma since their childhood. There are many people, in fact, I have one such a person uh, right now whom I'm dealing with who is actually going through many issues right now 
but the instant the root cause of the issue started when she was a child so people don't understand people think it's depression people think i have attachment issues i cannot form relationships no it just doesn't happen like that uh, it happens long back and these are all traumatic experiences okay so please feel free to ask questions because i'm going to share the screen also i'm going to show you what exactly happens in our brain when we go through trauma right so it is more intense than depression it is accompanied by flashbacks and trauma happens only when something anything in your life happens too fast too soon too long okay if anything has happened for a long period of time and you have been enduring it for a long time you can go through trauma if something happens too fast you didn't expect it to happen it's too fast then also you can have trauma but something happens too soon there is a difference between fast and soon fast can be accident soon is you did not expect it to happen now but it happened before it should have happened too soon then also you can have traumatic experiences and uh, so uh, what example should i give and uh, another thing is too long definitely yeah the too long people are suffering trauma in their relationships with their family in childhood onwards etc so childhood issues accident uh, rape uh, you know death sense of loss illness injury all these things leads to trauma any sense of loss say losing your freedom losing your you think that you have lost your uh, good number of years in your life that you can't do anything about it you think that every time you wanted to do something and it did not happen and it happened for a long period of time that also can be a trauma you did not experience you did not expect a relationship to end but it just ended that's like too fast or too soon or something like that so you can have a mixture of too long too fast too soon things like this and you go through traumatic experiences so it can take years for a patient of trauma to recover from trauma or it can also take it can also happen very fast within 6 to 7 months too depending on what treatment the person has been put into uh, i want to reiterate it in this particular live many parents have approached me and told oh you can do a cognitive behavioral therapy and you can get my uh, son or daughter out of this uh, situation first of all it's my request uh, you know it's a humble request please don't throw terms at any person you might have understood it from google or somewhere that there is something called cognitive behavioral therapy but one medicine does not work for every you know fever or every kind of uh, illnesses trauma person cbt will work much later before that the body with which they are constantly fighting the memory that is stored in every cell of the body that needs to be sorted and along with that many other things needs to be done you know many trauma patient they will just peacefully sleep and they will just sit like this and they will constantly do like this and they will constantly do like this because as if they are hearing things they are seeing things and that's making it very difficult for them right i think i also faced a bit of issue while listening to other incident where they had to go through operation or any accident with lot of pains involved i can feel my scars burning then suddenly exactly so for you the operation was traumatic because it happened because this entire incident of operation and the treatment is happening for too long so this is becoming more traumatic experience for you so definitely it's going to happen if any time if any time i hear of somebody uh, you know any any anybody telling anyone that uh, you know i'm just they are just leaving that person in between without any without any info without any like ghosting the person basically i kind of relive the experience which happened in my life so it is it is quite natural to happen but thing is for me it is it happens and then i'm fine but when a trauma when it a uh, person is going through trauma they are like stuck in the cycle and then the loop the constant loop is happening that's the problem with the trauma trauma patient all right so there are many theories of trauma uh, but there is one very uh, renowned theory which is called the polyvagal theory and i'm going to show you exactly what happens in our brain right now so i'm just going to shift my phone a little bit please bear with me and i'm going to share the screen with you because uh, visual experience is better than i continuously talking i think you can see yeah 
can you see this can anyone confirm if you can see this diagram any one of you can you confirm that you see this diagram or not yes thank you shrishta okay thank you jonrani so uh, all right i'll just hold it like this and now so hierarchy of the nervous system what usually happens is when we are going through any kind of traumatic experiences or any anything which is not normal usually we get into a fight or flight situation either we want to run away from the situation or we want to fight that particular situation but the moment there is some social engagement and social networking so when we are in this situation and suddenly we go through social engagement social networking we talk to somebody we are back to normal so that's why you can see this is the red alert zone and then once you have the social engagement you are back to normal right now let's say there is no social engagement you don't get any support anywhere whatsoever and you are constantly stuck in the loop of fight or flight fight or flight fight or flight suddenly there is a shutdown in the system now what is a shutdown the shutdown is you just don't know how to react you become numb so if you ask this people how do you feel they will say i don't know what to say because they are from here they have been here for long now they have straight away gone here the shutdown they are no longer in the social engagement so you can understand when people are saying that how do you feel and people are continuously saying that you know i don't know i don't know how to put it in words so basically they from fight or flight uh, feel hopeless maybe are uh, hopeless yes but they are basically numb they don't know what to say it's like you know uh, anesthesia has been given to them they don't know what to say they can't express themselves anymore because they have been in this situation for such a long time and they have got no support here and then they have chosen this as their defense mechanism they have shut themselves off from everything now if at that point of time suddenly their parents or their well wisher suddenly want them to bring here it will never work trust me it will never work that is exactly where indian society does a mistake india feels that you know the parents feel that okay the person has been in this particular period for such a long time let me help them to make friends and everything will be fine no the person has already shut themselves off from the social engagement too so it will not work so from here the person will again if you are trying to bring them out of this they will constantly go through fight or flight fight or flight and slowly and steadily they will go back to social engagement that's why you see there is no arrow between social engagement and shutdown there is either here or here so either way you either you can operate between this two or you can operate through this okay any question so far like i hope i have been able to make sense because the next thing that i'm getting into is a little bit more intense you're exactly going to see how your brain works when you go through traumatic experience any question so far anyone am i making sense yes no maybe mm. either i am being very boring sessions or something like that or it is making sense clear so far okay thank you chandrani so next i will show you exactly what the brain looks like okay how is the normal brain looks like what happens when you actually face the traumatic instance and what happens when you are constantly facing the traumatic experience okay so here comes the thing right so i am going to show in bits and pieces all right let's start with this section the social engagement section this green part okay now this green part is basically the normal part like how i am right now how you are right now maybe maybe just maybe you might not be as well so green part as it uh, suggests social engagement it is of connection safety oriented to the environment it is the joy it's in the present you feel grounded you are curious you are open you are compassionate you are mindful this is how we usually are and this segment of the brain is called ventral vagal this vent so this is the entire brain this entire segment is the brain but right now i am only talking about this uh, green segment which is the social engagement sector that is what we usually are 
this is called the parasympathetic nervous system so the nervous system has primarily two segments one is the sympathetic one is the parasympathetic but the parasympathetic can be of two categories one is ventral vagal one is dorsal vagal now i will tell you why it becomes a where does the third category comes from i will explain all of this so don't get uh, you know overwhelmed with such a diagram it is very easy to understand so as of now the green is how we operate in usual way so if we are in the social engagement in the green sector you will feel that you know you are hungry you you feel like going out you have resistance to infection that means you have immunity you have you can take rest you can recuperate then your organs are working fine your health is fine you're able to relate and connect okay and you are not defensive anymore so this is the level of our brain now something happens something just just something happens in the life a breakup a uh, accident an accident or uh, any any traumatic loss anything happens in their life the person starts to operate in the sympathetic nervous system which is the red segment the sympathetic nervous system what happens is here the person is operating with the fight or flight as you can see here fight or flight moving away or moving towards so if you are flight then you are moving away from the situation because you are worrying you are panicking you are you have anxiety your fear etc or you want to fight the situation so you are angry you are frustrated you are irritated you have extreme rage towards others okay so here you still are in the i can mode if you even if you are in the sympathetic range you are still in the i can mode you can see here the i can you still can work so if in the fight or flight if there is social engagement if there are people who are trying to help you if you have support system you can come back to the social engagement so this thing you can come back it's like sea waves it goes up and through proper support and proper support at the right time it can come down so it can happen like that you know fight or flight or social engagement now let's say you have been in the sympathetic segment of the brain for a long period of time long period let's say no you did not get any support for a long period of time or you didn't even understand that you needed support or anything like that at that point of time this wall of the sympathetic range is broken the entire sympathetic range this range is deactivated now so you are either numb or you are completely frozen this part is again the parasympathetic range but this is dorsal vagal dorsal vagal is associated with freezing you become numb you don't know what to do you don't know what to say it is disassociation numbness depression conservation of energy helplessness shame shut down hopelessness preparation for death so people who are planning for suicide or killing themselves they are working from the dorsal vagal part of their brain they feel trapped they will keep on saying i feel trapped there is it's a loop i can't do anything right so what happens in this in this situation what happens with your uh, body you your heart rate your blood pressure temperature muscle tone facial expression everything decreases even your sexual responses your immune response everything decreases many people who are suffering from depression have been covid infected there's a reason why because their immunity system has been infected for long because they have been in this one for long so i hope i'm making certain sense here so social engagement is the is the part of the brain which is usually the normal range in which we operate when something happens we go into this segment which is fight or flight if we can come down then this is the cycle in which any normal human being would operate somebody who is going through trauma they will break this break this line and they will straight away move here and they go through a freezing point numb and they have their health not only mentally physically also they are broken at that point of time many issues will come up dermatological issues absolute sense and it is somewhat scary yes yes it is scary
it is scary and you know as you can see that you know just listening to it is so scary how would a trauma person would feel day in day out years to be in that state of freeze state of numb being numb nothing they don't know they don't feel anything they don't know anything the only thing they feel is the flashbacks of anything happens and you you can see immunity system will go down dermatological issues eye problem you will fall suddenly suddenly your heart a lot of things will keep on happening with you because your immunity system is grown somewhere okay so this is how the brain is the sympathetic the parasympathetic where we normally are then comes the fight or flight sympathetic and then comes the freeze so a trauma patient is on the freeze segment now the thing is uh, when they are continuously in the perpetual fight flight they they have continuously either numb or anxious or depressed or they don't know what to do because they have been in that situation for such a long time any normal feelings any normal emotions for them is abnormal so let's say i am a trauma patient and you are absolutely normal you are smiling you are laughing i would feel why she is smiling because i forgot how to smile why to why would i smile things start getting difficult for a trauma patient not all trauma patient will show the same kind of symptoms but majorly these are the symptoms of a trauma patient okay so uh, that's why often when the person is in the freeze zone you know what is the first thing we ask them to do move just shake yourself just continuously shake yourself so that your body you know you are sending signals to your brain that your body can come down from the free section to the fight or flight and from there to the normal range that's why we ask them to shake to it's like if somebody is deep asleep we shake them utho 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 so it is almost like you are telling the trauma patient utho 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 it's like that so yes there is a lot of work that needs to be done with the body but that's not the only area there are many things that needs to be done when it comes to trauma okay so i'm going to uh, share an uh, a small small you know uh, case study that i had written the, uh, over there so peter levin a long time friend and colleague of the person who designed this entire trauma theory which we discussed so far had studied that the shutdown response through animal observations and body work with clients in waking there is a book called in waking the tiger if any one of you as a book lover uh, you can read book waking the tiger that is a book on trauma so they have seen that uh, a sudden shudder is required for the person to either wake up from the fight or flight or the freeze zone sudden shudder sometimes we often tell the person you lie down on the floor and just shake yourself it's like this just like shake yourself so you are just telling your brain wake up wake up wake up wake up it's like sending electric signals to your brain you know so that's how it works this is more or less the understanding of trauma now comes at what are the different types of trauma uh, you know so first is the acute trauma acute trauma results from a single incident not multiple one instance that has led to acute trauma the next is chronic trauma chronic trauma is repeated and prolonged trauma such as domestic violence or abuse prolonged too long okay the third one is the most difficult to solve which is called the complex trauma complex trauma is not one instance there can be multiple instances that has added to the person's trauma so if you want to solve one part suddenly something else works as the trigger if you want to solve like you know you touch this part this part pains you touch that part the other part pains so complex trauma is a is an invasive interpersonal nature so one thing is related to the other and it has led to a very complex situation for that person so these are the types of trauma now what are the symptoms of trauma which i have noted down of course shock denial disbelief confusion difficulty in concentration anger mood swings anxiety panic attacks guilt shame withdrawing from others disconnecting yourself from everything around you digestive issues fatigue dermatological issues any physical issues constant headache uh, feeling uh, extremely jumpy feeling disconnected or numb suicide ideation flashbacks no communication or prolonged wailing constantly crying we don't know why okay 
Now, what are the solution for trauma? Of course, there is solution, but trauma takes time to get solved. So, uh, if the client is constantly or if the person is in a shutdown mode, the first thing is to shake the person, you know, uh, putting the person through some social engagement in, you know, uh, using a medicine dropper, not put the person suddenly in a group and you feel everything will be fine. No, one person or the other, one by one, building the trust of the person. That is one step. Shaking, a little bit of dance movement therapy will be very beneficial for traumatic patients. But apart from that, there is there are others too. Music therapy. Music therapy works excellent for traumatic patient to now you know to calm down because it's brain. You have to calm it down so that it can actually start working at the normal range. Next is EMDR or eye movement desensitization. That is whatever memory you have for the trauma, we try to distort that memory. So basically memory is anything how you want to remember it. You want to remember it in a bad way, that is how you will remember it. If you want to remember it in a good way, that is how you would remember it. So EMDR is a technique we do to distort the memory of the mind. You know how that I am not going to share. EFT, emotional freedom technique is like tapping the person you, you know there are 10 energy meridians of our body so all the energy all the memories are stored in 10 parts of the body so when we keep on tapping such points you know there are 10 parts maybe i can do another live on the eft part so when you keep on doing that these are basically knocking ghar mein koi hai, that kind of a knocking and things will start flowing out there is something called timeline therapy timeline therapy is uh, basically taking you back in a systematic manner, taking you back to the traumatic experience and releasing it, but in a systematic manner, not just randomly, then the person will be in eventual freeze moment. Hypnotherapy, Reiki, yoga, meditation, cognitive behavior therapy, support network, and if nothing works, then only medication. But in all probability, Medication is not required for a trauma patient. You can actually handle them with all these things. And you have seen CBT came much later. So, but in problem here is everything starts other way around. It starts from medication, support network, CBT, yoga, meditation, and that's why it never works. So it has to start from, the funnel has to be different. But, and the people are using the funnel in the different position. So that is pretty much about trauma and I really wanted to talk about this because most of my patients nowadays are coming through, going through trauma. Uh, 20, as I said, 20 to 35 is the major age group that they are going through trauma. So uh, the next uh, live that we have is on post-traumatic stress disorder uh, that we will have next week. So today's live is at the general understanding of what is trauma and how our brain reacts and everything. I hope this is useful for you and if you find it is uh, worth it, then please feel free to share it. Not for us, not for Viropana. You, if, when you share it, somebody else might see and they might just know what they are going through. So please share this thing. Let people be more aware of what is happening inside their mind and in their body. Let's not call everything in the world depression. There are far more serious things than depression. Okay, so thank you everyone for uh, joining the live and uh, hopefully I've been able to add certain value today and we'll see you next week with post-traumatic stress disorder on our Instagram page of Viropana. Till then, please uh, feel free to share this live and be just be more aware and informed. Trust me, everything can be solved and trauma can be solved without medication if you are treated at the right point of time. Thank you very much.